So, another day. Uh, we're back on, obviously, following on from the last video, we're back in the garage working on Kurt's Polo. As I said uh, at the end of the last video, we're going to look at completing the gearbox mount, uh, mount the radiator, and start looking at the tie bars. Just start finishing this job up now because when we're not far off the finishing line, uh, we're pretty damn close. So, I've got the big heater on, as you can probably hear it in the background. It's starting to get cold, so I'm just warming the place up. I don't know where we're going to get to today. Let's get cracking. Let's see what I can get done in the next few hours on Kurt's Polo. So, finally finished this mount off. You can just see now. Reinforced the edge, reinforced here. Put some what Kurt calls his speed holes in there. Cleaned it all up, all the edges. All six to mount nice, all's good. Do you know what? This weld here is annoying the living daylights out of me. It's just really messy. I'm going to have to clean that up, but that's my OCD. But anyway, that's that sorted out. I'm going to get on now with doing the tie bars and see how they turn out. So, I've put the wheel on and I've compressed the suspension so all the weight's on it. There's still going to be a little bit of movement upwards, but to give me an idea of where this tie rod is going to sit, this is the one off the original subframe. So as I said before, I've got these and I'm going to put them on this area so basically the tie rod rose joint can sit in there. But what I'm seeing is, where, if I was to put that flush with the bar I've welded in, I'm only getting about an inch of clearance of the bottom of the gearbox. Let me show you. So that's kind of where the bars would sit. Hold on, let me take it up, sorry. It'd be about, it's about there. So that's where you can just about get your finger in clearance from the bottom of the box, which I'm concerned about. When you start getting the, the suspension to go up, it's going to catch the bottom of the box so what i'm going to do is back to this area i'm going to drop this down probably 50 millish there then that will give me a good two or three inch clearance for the box for suspension travel so that's what i'm going to go on with now cutting the box section getting it tacked to this getting it tacked to that and then at least i can start making some tie rods and getting this back on its wheels So this is what I've done. So this is the, the tie bar, the, the full bar across the front. This is the box section to drop it down, what you want it to do. And this is the mount where the roll joint sits in the hole which is there. Which obviously, like, basically example of this. Now, this obviously buy just for temporary mock-up so I can check clearance on the gearbox. And as you can see there, I've got a good you know, two and a half inches between the bottom tie rod and the gearbox. So when the suspension travel goes upwards, it should have enough clearance here to clear it. So all we need to do now here to finish this off is make an end plate, tie it in across this top edge here, same with here and same with the other side. And then two tie rods, and then it can go back on its wheels and I can measure shaft lengths. So I'm quite happy with the progress. I'm going to order some CDS one, uh, one inch tube now to make the tie bars with. And I think from there, we're not far off giving it back to Kurt to um, get on with his jobs. So let's crack on. Let's see where this video ends up. So to show you the kind of like the finished, what I was going for, if you look, get it closer. I've cornered all these in now. So it plates all the end of the box section. It's reinforced it. Everything's fully welded. I'll give it a quick coat of black paint just to seal it in. I've left the middle area because obviously I'm still going to make the engine mount. But that there is the two front stabilizers for the tie bars done and dusted. So quite reasonably happy with that. Some of the welds I could you know, you could do better if we had my TIG welder here. But it's not here at the moment. But... It is what it is, it'll work, it's strong, and yeah, so now it's, let's get on with the tie bars, get them finished, 
And then let's look at tying this front mount to this front cross member. So obviously, as I explained, I'm on with the tie bars now for the uh, polo. So, been on the lathe, done some machining, still got to do some tapping. But let me kind of show you what we're doing here and explain how we're making these tie bars. So as you can see, we've made all these little pieces and then pieces. We've got the bar and a rose joint. So how this is going to go is, that's going to be the front with a um, left-handed uh, thread and that'll go to the rose joint which will go to the front cross member then it'll have one at the back obviously then they want a piece of bar here which will be uh, one inch uh, CDS this one will have a right-handed thread which will go to this which then that will go to i don't know if you can see it on the pit yeah you can that will be basically in there and welded round and then that will go to the bottom arm so what that means is basically when you turn this bar it will push them two out or obviously the opposite way it'll pull them in meaning you've got full adjustment then on the bottom arm area so you can move the wheel backwards and forwards to change the suspension settings now i use um unf 5 8 threads now the reason for that is there is multiple threads there very very fine threads so that means when it's in here on its on, on the, the thread inside here there's so much surface area to pull on so massive amounts of strength in a short space, the maximum. And also, uh, another reason is, with it being so fine, a very minute turn of the bar will adjust the suspension, you know, very, very fine. So when you dial the suspension in, it means you can dial it in quite perfect. So these are all machined up. I've got to do some tapping now. I've got to weld that to that. And then kind of guess the size of the CDS bar and then go from there. But then if you think you don't have to be very spot on, because the reason being is imagine this piece here. You can literally have that, you know, there inside inside the um, the bar there. You can have it a full, you know, a massive amount of distance of adjustment. You've just got to kind of set this one where you think it's going to be. But again, with all that adjustment, it means that you don't have to be 100% bang on from the start. You've got, as long as you're building loads of adjustment, you know that you can get the suspension set up later down the line. So let me turn these so they fit inside the CDS tube and let me get the tap through these and then I'll show you an assembled tie rod and you can see what I mean. So tie bar's done. Going to get them installed. But before I do that, I've been looking at this front engine mount to get it done because that's the kind of last job I needed to do. So what I've done is I've turned a piece of steel to fit into that thread with the bolt. And then what I've also done then is I've turned a piece of outer steel with the press bush in it. Um, the bush, I have no idea what it's off. I just found it in my toolbox. So I'm going to utilise that. And then let me show you what we're going to do. That's literally going to go in between there. I'm going to put a piece of bar in between there and this mat, this bush, weld them together, and then it's got a front stabiliser. So let's get on with that, and let's get on with fitting these tie bars, and then we should be fully mounted and back on its wheels. So these are the final few bits now. I've welded on a toe eye bracket, for obviously for when he does his track days. I've made the little stabiliser for the front uh, engine mount so we can rock. Obviously, there's a little bush in there. Welding police are going to be on because, obviously, the spot welds. 
but hey ho, I like consistency. And unfortunately, with a 240 volt welder, sometimes you don't get the consistency you require. But anyway, so that's done, that's done. Tie bars are now on, I've made all the spacers, so let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the tie bar fitted. It ties into the front of the chassis and goes to the bottom arm. Obviously, it's rose jointed there with two spacers, and obviously it's solidly mounted there. But let me show you what I mean by adjustment. So when you can so when you rotate this, it pulls that backwards and forwards, pulls the, the, the center line of the wheel backwards and forwards. So you can adjust the suspension off the cuff of where it needs to be. So when doing these types of projects, I always build in a massive amount of adjustment. So that means if you're ever a couple of milli out, you can make sure your suspension settings are all in the right place. So technically now, this now is completely done. It's ready for to put on the wheels, put the bumper on and ready. So just have a quick glance over, engine mount, engine mount, front stabiliser, two tie bars and obviously a lot of coating. So let me put the wheels on, get the bonnet down and we'll end this one. So it's back together, back on its wheels, ready to roll. Everything seems good. Now it's all moving, everything clears. The radiator's in, I don't know if you, let's see if I can put that in there. The radiator's in now. In essence, we've just drilled an hole in the um, cross, new cross member either side to, to locate it. And we've put two little locators. We'll get smaller ones, but that holds the top of the radiator in. So it all fits and it all sits as it should do. The sump's got clearance, the tyre bar on this side's got clearance, everything is in there and everything seems to be done. So, put the bonnet down and let's double check the bonnet, make sure everything moves and uh, clears and we'll wrap this one up. So that's this car now finished. All, all, all my work's done, it's ready to go back to Kurt to be finished off. Um, you know, wiring, water system, painting, bits and pieces like that. I've measured up for the drive shafts, so I can get the drive shafts done in the meantime, all fabbed up. The car doesn't have to be here for that. So yeah, to give people an idea of what how long that's taken me, obviously I've done it over a number of evenings and, and days and stuff like that, but I reckon a week, a week's work to get it in, get the car mount, you know, get it all cut out, everything done. It's around, but it took me around a, you know, a week to, to get done. Um, as you've seen the progress, there's been a lot of cutting, a lot of fab work. There's been a lot to get it to fit. But I think now, you know, the car's going to be very special. I think it's going to be something interesting. As far as I know, it's the first one done. Um, so let's see where the, jo the journey takes this car. If people want to follow it, go on Instagram and search k 24 Polo, you'll find it on there. Kurt's going to carry on updating the build. So, this one's done. Out of the workshop, on with the next one. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you on the next build, guys.